We've got clips of Jake Uger on Piers Morgan absolutely destroying his propaganda and lighting up the MAGA panel in a rather entertaining way as well. So we've got a few of these clips lined up and ready to go and we'll just jump in where is needed for the context. Hey you, yes you, did you know we have memberships for as low as $3 a month? You can help the channel grow, reach new heights and help protect democracy and you get a long list of exclusive perks from members only polls to getting my videos early. The link is always in the description of every video if you want go ahead and check that out and thank you guys here's he is that bad he is that bad you're Pierce, actively oh, I covering meet you know Pierce, you know what is hold on hold on hold on one more thing you guys you know what you sound like you sound like democrats that were saying that joe biden is young and dynamic behind the scenes guys we have eyes and ears we can see donald trump he's an unhinged madman the only reason you don't think so is because you're so biased that you're like, oh, it's normal to terminate the Constitution. <laughs> you're making to murder change, your change. Before, I want to come to Vinny. That's Hang not on. normal. Hang on. I want to come to Vinny. Well, what I want to say once again, Cheng, you shouldn't misconstrue the fact I've known Trump a long time and say I see the good, bad, and ugly. You should never misconstrue this for me saying that Americans should vote for him or that I would vote for him or any of those things. You seem to, you seem to be incapable of assessing the stuff that comes out of my mouth. I was editor of the Daily Piers, Mirror newspaper for 10 years. Huh? Did you see your intro? It was 99% negative against Kamala Harris. This is exactly right. And I'm glad that people are done pretending that Piers is this objective commentator or unbiased when it comes to Trump. I'm not going to play it, but you can literally just go watch his monologue from that episode where the entirety of it is bashing Kamala. His Twitter is all bashing Kamala, defending Trump. His framing of the way he talks about these issues are always right leaning. And then he wants to be like, but I'm a centrist. I said a bad thing about Trump four years ago, so I'm unbiased, which is incredibly dumb. And I'm just glad that Jenk is the one calling him out for it. And you're right, Piers. There is a problem because when 98% of the media is he's Hitler, he's this, he's evil. What else? Anti FBI. He's going to use the FBI as the Gestapo. Are you freaking nuts? So I play this clip and we'll get into it more, but first I just wanted to use it to kind of set up the exposing of the hypocrisy of these MAGA panelists. As remember, he's upset about comparisons of Trump to Hitler and how the legacy media does it, right? Well, let's see what this panel was discussing just moments before this clip. What I hope to see happen sooner than later because the clock is ticking is for the emotions to be removed from this election. Kamala could run her Ren and Stimpy, happy, happy, joy, joy campaign all she wants, which sounds strikingly similar to Hitler's strength through joy, but I'm not even going to get into that. Emily, you kind of brushed over it, love, and I think you should have stayed on it. Emily's a Jewish girl, and she mentioned the strength through joy was 100% hijacked from the Nazis. So both of them, both of the Trump supporters on the panel, compare Kamala's campaign to Hitler and the Nazis, yet they're upset when it happens to Trump. Is this logically consistent? This is, on its face, hypocritical and ridiculous. And also, they don't care when the media does it to, say, Biden, for instance, who got checked neurologically and his doctor literally said, hey, like, there's no signs of dementia or extensive cognitive decline, no neurological issues. But the media consistently ran with the story because Republicans own the media, like right-leaning media controls the narrative. They were pointing out all his gaffes, talking about dementia and his mental decline. And Republicans didn't say a peep about that because they only care that Trump is getting called out. That's their only gripe here. When the legacy media is being used negatively against Democrats, well, they just sit back and cheer it on then. Give me three answer. things okay. she stands yeah. for. So, yes. She's saying so we got she's it. Announced she's them. Okay, so number one, she talked about housing, which is a huge issue in this country. If you block the private equity guys from buying our homes, that would be a massive gain for the American people. What's Donald Trump's uh, housing policy? He says, oh, drill, baby, drill. That has nothing to do with housing. He's such a moron. Okay, then you talk about the prices were out of control. She says, hey, we should have a check on that. That is your grocery store, your gas, et cetera, things that matter in your life. She at least has a policy. What's Trump's policy? I'm going to give corporations another tax cut. Well, listen, you were in office for four years, uh, to Vinny's point, and what did you do? You didn't even build a wall. You built like 30 feet of wall. He says, Sheldon Adelson, Miriam Adelson, I'll just give you U.S. foreign policy on Israel, and you said it, and he brags about it. He says, oil companies, I'll let you set, set oil uh, policy. He is so both system, system, systematically, systemically, 
and personally corrupt. He's the worst of all worlds. And Kamala Harris has these policy positions you guys never talk about while you pretend that Trump has policy. Trump's only policy is another corporate tax cut. Jake is spot on here, but I do think it's kind of funny how half of Republicans are saying, well, Kamala's plans are, are communism. She's going to do total communism. And the other half is like Piers Morgan, where they're acting like, oh, well, she's not even releasing policy. She's scared to talk about policy. She's just campaigning on vibes. When Donald Trump actually doesn't talk about policy outside of mass deportation, which literally isn't going to happen, and corporate rich guy tax cuts, right? That will cut, do a little bit for working class families, but will be disproportionately skewed to the rich like his last tax cuts. What is Donald Trump's plan outside of that? What's he going to do on housing? What's he going to do on child care? It's all just ridiculous. He has to stay away from this stuff first and foremost because he plans to let his appointments do Project 2025, but he needs to be hush-hush about it, so he, he just refuses to talk about policy. He's too busy talking about how wind lowers baking consumption and how the Revolutionary War was won by controlling the airports when Kamala has talked about housing policy. She's talked about child tax credit, expanding the earned income tax credit for working class families, right? Bringing back the border deal that Trump killed, FTC fines for price gouging, a ceasefire in Gaza, continuing to send weapons to Ukraine. She's actually laid out policy, but for some reason, right-wing media, which again controls the narratives in this country, has put it out there that she just refuses to speak about policy, yet they shield Trump when his literal policy solutions to thing, things are, we're gonna do something big and beautiful. When is Trump's last rally that he laid out policy objectives? I'll wait. If you enjoyed this video, we're Social Society. We're a commentary channel influenced by politics, society, and the economy. We're pretty left-leaning on this channel, but we're open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing here is having conversations that bring everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that could interest you, consider smashing that subscribe button, leaving us a like, or commenting on this video. We even have memberships available as low as $3 if you'd like to support because the only way we become a society is together. Peace.